Willkommen alle zusammen. I got a very cool video for you today. Viking DNA in each European country. And of course, if your ancestors are from Europe and settled somewhere else in the world, you will find your ancestry here too. Uh, but we can really say uh, Germanic DNA uh, we're talking about specifically, or more academically correct, haplogroup I. And using these maps here. So you should really check out this website if you're interested in more really great data there. Um, you guys, I don't like doing these videos. You all like them. The videos on DNA and Ancestry are the ones that get the most views. But you know me, I don't encourage DNA tests. They are misleading at best. And at worst, they could have way worse results that I won't even go into here. A far more reliable and safer Ancestry test is to just look in the mirror and of course look at the history of your ancestors and look at the history of our people that we know. And this is what I'm going over in this video. You guys like the DNA stuff, so I'm going over that, but I will be giving some additional information about the Viking and Germanic migrations in history over the last 2,000 years, explaining when and why you may find these DNA results in some of these surprising places in your ancestry. And I did a full long video on the Germanic tribes and their migrations here. If you want to check that out, that is all the Germanic tribes. Uh, first, it's very important important we explain the difference in haplogroup I and haplogroup I1 DNA because you will see a difference in these two maps. So haplogroup I and haplogroup I1, they are both uh, categories within the human Y chromosome DNA haplogroups. Haplogroup I is one of the oldest haplogroups tracing back to a single male lineage, they think, uh, in Europe. It is believed to have originated 25 to 30,000 years ago, and the distribution of haplogroup I is widespread across Europe, but it shows higher frequencies in Scandinavia, the Balkans, and other parts of Eastern Europe. On the other hand, haplogroup I1 is a much younger subclad of haplogroup I, meaning it is a more specific lineage within the broader haplogroup I family. And that haplogroup has its highest frequencies in Scandinavia and is closely associated with Germanic uh, populations and peoples. So the way we can look at it, and I can explain it to make it easy for you guys, haplogroup I reflects some of the oldest primal genetic families who call Europe their homelands, and the places with high haplogroup I, they are going to have relatively little mixing with other haplogroups uh, over the uh, millennia, that's why you see uh, these places highlighted in dark here. Haplogroup uh, I1, on the other hand, is closer reflecting the Germanic and Norse peoples and their migrations over more recent history as 2,000 to 4,000 years ago. So this map here is the one that we are going to be using, haplogroup I1. First, no surprise, we have the highest in Scandinavia, specifically this area here, uh, which is where yours truly is from, by the way. Highest Germanic beast mode lands on the planet, uh, basically eastern Norway and uh, western Sweden area and maybe even parts of uh, rural Denmark. And you can really see the difference here traveling in Norway and Sweden. The people even look a little bit different. And that's not to say that these other areas of Scandinavia are any less Germanic. Uh, but the reason that they have slightly less haplogroup uh, I1 DNA, and this is a bit lighter color in the map, is that they were a bit more subject to migration and interbreeding. Uh, Portuguese and Spanish sailors, for example, in the 17 and 1800s, they brought a little foreign DNA, and the people there in those areas in Western Norway tend to have slightly darker features than in Eastern Norway and Sweden, for example. That's just one difference that some people might see, but this whole area still has has the highest Germanic DNA in the world. And if things keep going the way they are now with migration, and these percentages are going to be cut in half, by the way, in the next 50 years, but uh, yeah, that's a rant for another day. Uh, touching on Iceland, which in all honesty should have the highest percentage since it was basically all Norwegians that settled there during the Viking Age. 
and there's been very little migration to Iceland since then. But important to note that uh, oftentimes uh, they took the women from Ireland to settle with them in uh, Iceland. So there will be a significant amount of Celtic DNA on this island. Moving east, very important to speak about Finland. Very connected to Scandinavia, of course, but like the northern parts of Scandinavia, with the indigenous Sami people here, uh, they have more finno ugric uh, DNA than anything else closely related to Siberian cultures. But still, plenty of migration and intermarriage with the Finns to the Vikings, and throughout the thousand years until today, this part of Finland is actually still largely Swedish-speaking, which is why the haplogroup I1 is stronger there. Also, we can touch on the Baltic areas. Of course, there was plenty of Viking settlement there. We know it. There are plenty of Viking sagas about that. Uh, but I would like to see more coming down here in the Volga River into Ukraine, actually. Um, it doesn't uh, show, uh, it doesn't really reflect on this map how much potential haplogroup uh, I1 DNA is going to be there. Because um, that's where the uh, Viking Rus settled and where they set up rule. That's also uh, a large part of the area where the Germanic tribes Goths settled about five, six hundred years before the Viking Age. Now, I think the reason why uh, this is is that there are not too many people in Eastern Europe as into DNA tests as they are in the West, for example, so there's a lot um, less uh, sample size to go from, but I think if they were taking DNA tests as much as we did here in the West, um, we would find a lot more haplogroup I1 there. Uh, moving on, not surprising, we're still a very high haplogroup I1 if we go uh, into uh, Germany. Uh, especially northern Germany, as low as Schleswig. This was actually a part of Denmark and a major Viking settlement uh, in that age. And even still, going south all, all along this territory was Germanic tribes 2,000 years ago. So it's still very high haplogroup I1 DNA there. And it gets more Celtic as we get further south and up into the Alps and things like that. Moving on to Britain, this is very high actually, and it's surprising to some people. If you don't know the history, England got not one, not two, but three massive migrations of Germanic peoples and this haplogroup I1 DNA. They got the Germanic tribes that migrated during the migration period from the three to the 500s, the Angles, Saxons, and Jute uh, tribes. Um, you got the Viking settlement. The Vikings owned a part of England uh, in, during the Viking Age, during the 8 uh, 900s. This was the Dane Law. And then Norman Viking conquest in the late 1000s. That is why there is so much there. But it's still in, in the British Isles, it's mostly Celtic. Although some studies show certain areas of Britain or certain families even specifically have well over 50% of haplogroup uh, I1 and, and Germanic DNA opposed to Celtic. But again, this is just some places, some families, but there is definitely significantly higher than uh, this map shows. Ireland and Scotland, it's not as much, but there still was significant uh, Viking settlement in certain places uh, during the age there, so that's why they have a pretty decent amount of haplogroup I1. Moving a little south to northern France, you all know this, this is the Normans. Uh, this was not just one Viking chieftain that was brought into rule, like you see in the TV show. There was a massive Viking migration here, they set up rule, they settled, uh, they even brought their wives with them sometimes, so it isn't just uh, uh, a couple of Vikings that settled here, there were still present in Norman culture and DNA still there and, and many generations after they first settled. Lower France in general has haplogroup uh, I1 due to the Germanic migration starting in the 300s. Uh, the Franks were a Germanic tribe too after all so that's why they have quite a bit of haplogroup I1 DNA uh, in other parts of France but there are a couple places here that we have way above normal haplogroup um, I1 around the Orléans area and also in the southwest. I don't know why that is a bit higher there, honestly. Um, maybe these 
these were ruling centers of Frankish kings, or maybe guys, honestly, some places, some rural small places especially, or um, specific areas where noble families lived, they had a stronger culture of marrying within their own people and making babies. For example, when the Franks came in to rule, um, they set up um, certain territories, and since then, you know, these noble families got together and they pretty much only interbred with each other. So that's why in these regions they have a lot more Germanic and haplogroup uh, I1 DNA. Um, that is just the way it is some places and other places, you know, simply don't care. They don't have a culture about interbreeding with each other so much. Um, they don't mind um, interbreeding with people from other tribes or kingdoms or other places in the world. Uh, this leads us to our next region because it's very much so here. Italy, look at that. Very low haplogroup I1 in general, but a couple spots in the north have very high, and a region here just east of Rome has very high haplogroup I1. So this is due to the Longobards, guys. The Longobardi, they were a very powerful Germanic tribe that invaded Rome and absolutely took over during the migration period. They settled in large amounts in the north, um, but you also see it here um, where they established a uh, uh, kingdom and law in central Italian peninsula as well. Even a little part of Sicily there have some strong haplogroup uh, I1, and I have no idea why it is there. Maybe one of you guys can fill that in, but I'm not aware of any history um, about Germanic tribes uh, migrating there in big numbers. It was not a super high amount of Longobards that settled anywhere in the Italian peninsula. Like I said, it was a migration. Um, but uh, these people, like I said, they have been very good about intermarrying with each other over the last 1700 years. So much that you actually see a lot of Italians today, 1700 years later with light features and blue eyes, which is really amazing considering they have been surrounded by the more dominant genes with darker features in Italy for almost 2000 years. As you know, blue eyes, blonde hair, fair skin, this is the recessive gene and nine times out of 10, no, no, not nine times, but I think like, what's it, what's it like 75% of the time if they get with a darker featured person, the kids are going to end up with darker featured. Um, so that, the, the fact that people uh, still exist in Italy with lighter features just shows um, um, the recessive genes, people with the lighter features have been breeding with each other in a lot of these areas here, just like some places in France and other places in the world. Final part, we actually have some notable haplogroup uh, I won in the Balkans, Croatia, Slovenia, Serbia area. Um, there were some Germanic tribes definitely that migrated here, like the Heruli or the Goths. I didn't think that it was that big in numbers, but hey, maybe it was. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the Germanic tribes and their migrations, check out my video here because I go over each tribe and when and where they settled. There's some fantastic history and you might even be able to decide which tribe you came from during the Germanic tribal area as I like to call it. But that's all for today, I hope this helps and gives a little insight into your history. If you are new to my channel, I know this video is going to get a bit more uh, viewers that haven't uh, seen my channel before, but welcome, we go over the Viking and Germanic history and also the religion and culture and way of life as well. So if you'd like to learn about your own ancestry, your own pre-Christian native ancestry, welcome. But that's all for today. Heavy CS Nestor.